Do I have to spell it out or draw you a map? You crossed the line. You just crossed the line. Here's the line. This is you. You crossed it. Hey, Pinnacle Studio peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love for PinnacleStudioPro.com. All right, my beautiful, beautiful Pinnacle Studio peeps. I got a request to show you guys how to draw a line across a map. So I'm going to show you all how to get that done with Paint and Pinnacle Studio. So let's jump off in the Pinnacle Studio 19 Ultimate and make it happen. All right, my Pinnacle Studio peeps. I'm about to show you guys how to draw a travel line on a map. But before I get into that, I got to remind you of a few quick things. You know how I do. Remember to like, comment, and share this video. When you do those things, it lets people know that the content in the video was good, and it tells them, watch it. Watch it, because you're going to like it. All right? So if you like my content, do that for me, all right? Subscribe to the channel. If you're watching this video and you're not a subscriber, you're missing out. Because if you don't subscribe, then you don't get notifications when I upload new content. And then you won't know when I'm bringing more Pinnacle Studio love and educating you on how to use the software. So subscribe to the channel so that you stay in the know and you get all the knowledge about Pinnacle Studio software. All right? Let's go ahead and make some magic happen. All right, so I've navigated to a location on my computer that has a photo of a map. Now, this photo of the map is 1920 by 1080, so it is the same resolution as the video that I'm producing. So if you want everything to be in sync and looking good and layered on top of each other correctly, then I would make my photo 1920 by 1080 or make it match the resolution of your video. If you don't know how to do that, you can Google that or search it on YouTube and figure out how to change the size or resolution of a photo. So I'm going to right click on this photo. And I'm going to go to open with. And I'm going to choose paint. Paint is a program that should be on your PC if you have a Windows PC. I'm going to move this over so I can see both locations. As you can see on this map, I have included San Antonio and Houston. So I'm going to make it look like I'm traveling from San Antonio to Houston by drawing a travel line on this map. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that brushes is selected by left clicking on brushes. Then I'm going to go to size and I'm going to select the largest size available, which is eight pixels. And then I'm going to select the color that I want, which is going to be red. Now that I have those selections made, I'm going to bring my cursor to a start position. I'm going to choose which road I'm going to travel on. I'm going to be traveling on I-10, baby. All y'all out there on I-10, what's up? So I'm going to hold down my left mouse and then I'm going to follow the path until I get to my destination. All right, I'm going to keep it moving. All right, so now that I've got this done, I just need to save this picture to a location that I want to be able to access later to bring it into Pinnacle Studio. Or I can save it to a location where my watch folders are. And when I access that watch folder, it'll be available to me in Pinnacle Studio. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to select a JPEG picture.
and I'm going to select the location on my computer where I want to save it. I'm going to save it in the same location where the original picture is. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a different name. And then I'm going to click on save. So now that I'm done with paint, I'm going to close this out. Now I'm going to access Pinnacle Studio 19. And I'm going to go to the Edit tab. Now I'm going to drag the original picture into the timeline by left clicking on it holding down my mouse and dragging it down into the timeline. And you can see this is the one that does not have the red line on it. Now I'm gonna come back to the photo and because the default for photos is three seconds, I want this to be longer than three seconds. I'm gonna place my cursor at the end of the photograph until I see a line and an arrow pointing at that line. I'm gonna hold down my left mouse I'm going to drag this out to the duration I want. Now I'm going to left click on the photo that has the red line that I drew on it. I'm going to drag that down into the timeline. I'm going to make sure I put it on a track that is above the original photo because I want the red line to show up on top of that one. So now I'm going to do the same thing and drag this out so that it is the same length as the photo that's below it. Left click, drag it out. And so now all I can see is the red line. Doesn't look like anything's happened. So what I need to do is I need to either double left click on this to open up the effects editor or I can right click on it and go to Open Effects Editor. Now I need to go to 2D, 3D. And I'm going to go to 2D Editor Advanced. And now I'm going to make sure that my playhead is at the beginning. Sometimes it jumps to the end, so I'm going to place my playhead at the beginning. I'm going to go up here to select preset. And I'm going to change it from default to no preset. And now we see that we have the line going across the screen. So basically by putting a photo underneath it and a photo on top of it, what you're going to do is remove the photo on top and then bring the photo on top back. And what that does, it makes it look like the line is going across the screen, even though it isn't. So to do that, we need to crop. So cropping will crop out the picture that's on top. So we're gonna select cropping. And we're going to crop out the right. So we're going to move this over until the picture or the line is gone or the picture is gone. It's really the picture. Okay, so that's good. So now what we want to do is we want to enable keyframes. So I'm going to click on the keyframing button. And so at this point, this initial keyframe that was just created, we know that we're cropped on the right hand side. So we want to place our playhead somewhere where we want the line to be finished. So I'm going to place my playhead here. 
And then I'm going to crop everything back. And so now the line is across the screen. So what happens now is it creates a keyframe here for the picture being cropped at this position. So now if I scrub my timeline, you see what happens. The line or the travel line goes across to the new location. Easy peasy lemon squeeze man. So if for some reason you move your playhead all the way to the end and your line moved back the other way for some reason that you don't know, you can just right click on the last keyframe we created and select copy keyframe. Then right click near the end of the timeline and do paste keyframe. You can drag this keyframe all the way to the end. And what that does is it makes sure that the line stays out the whole time. I didn't have that issue probably because I, I like to think I know what I'm doing sometimes. Uh, but you might have that issue if you go in the wrong order of operations and you might need to add a keyframe at the end. If you move your playhead all the way to the end and the line stays out there, there's no need to put another keyframe out there. All right. So when you're done, click on OK. And it's a wrap, people. How to draw a travel line in Pinnacle Studio 19 Ultimate. Let's go on a trip. Let's go on a trip. Let's all go on a lovely little trip. Let's go on a trip. Let's go on a trip. Let's all go on a lovely little trip. Deuces. All right, guys, you know the routine. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Show the thumb some love, people. It tells other people that the content in my video is good. Leave me some comments, all right? Just drop by, say thanks, ask a question, whatever. If I can't answer your question, I'll point you in the right direction to get you some help so you can get back to editing those videos. And last but not least, subscribe to the channel. If you're just watching these videos, but you're not subscribing, I bet you're missing out on a bunch of other videos that could be helping you use the software. So subscribe to the channel and that way you'll get notifications whenever I upload a video and you'll know whenever I upload new content and you'll keep on learning and get it better with the software. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.